to set it. Well, we have a triple host. Paul has power also. That's great. Um, I like that. He's, okay. co he's co host number two. Yeah, I'm number one. I'm number one in this case. <laughs> Okay, good Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the May 19th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee, the full committee. Um, and Xenia will change her name to, so we don't have two Margarets. Um, I never get the links, so I'm always Margaret. A, yeah, no, that's okay. We'll, we'll start to put you on. So I think my my first task of today is to both welcome everybody, but also to call out to make sure everybody can hear and be heard since we're conducting the meeting virtually. So I will do it as I see people on the screen. And when more people join, I'll do the same thing. So Jonathan. Good morning. Morning, Sean. Here. Paul. Present. Rupert. Howdy. Ben <laughs> and Angelica. Here. Thank you all for joining. And I realize that this is actually the first meeting we've had since the vote of the school, which, as everyone knows, was a resounding yes. Um, and, you know, I have to say that, you know, I did some knocking on the doors and you had an inkling of it, but I was, uh, I didn't know what it was going to be until the very end. So it's this incredibly strong support by the Amherst community for schools um, and for climate, the, the, the two themes uh, that we know we need a new school. So we're now in the phase of making all those beautiful videos, adding the details of the design development. So I'm going to turn it over to Margaret because it's a pretty simple agenda, but one of the things we'll do is also at the end of it, just review the calendar for the next few meetings because we there's at least one change. And then um, Denise will talk about what is or is what might remain to be done in June, and we'll make sure everyone has a June full meeting on their calendar. So Margaret, I'm going to just, it's a, as I said, a fairly simple agenda to review what's been going on for the last few weeks with subcommittees. So just checking to see that folks can see this. It is short. I do just wanna sort of um, thank Kathy for her leadership um, up until this point. And, not sure everybody knows that it was Kathy's birthday, the day of the vote. So um, it was really wonderful. I was able to go to the victory celebration and hear the group sing happy birthday to her with huge grins on their faces. So it, but that was a really great moment. And I was sort of feel glad to be part of this. Um, as Kathy said, it's a pretty simple, um, we're going to give up. Basically, Denisco is going to give updates on the subcommittee meetings that we've had so far. We have one invoice. I do want to just flag that the other really major change that's happened since we last met, as I think everyone knows, is that Mike has um, stepped down, uh, at least temporarily, um, from uh, the superintendent role. And so we have had to do a little bit of scrambling to sort of sort out um, how to continue to organize meetings with teachers. So there's the public meetings that are going on. There are also meetings with staff that are going on. And that's made um, some of the scheduling a little bit complicated. So thank you for sticking with us as we sort of, as we negotiate this. But um, that's it. There's just one small invoice from us because we've sat now completed the feasibility phase. And the next invoice, as you will see, which won't be for at least another month, will be for uh, the, re the next steps in the project. So does anyone have any questions before I take that down? Nope, okay. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to Denisco to walk us through what was presented and communicated and responded to. We're gonna start with site, is that right, Tim? So I, I wanna just say one thing, Tim, just as before you start. Um, Angela, who's been staffing this committee, um, doing a phenomenal job, has set up the three subcommittees. And as some of you may be aware that 
that we call, now calling sustainability subcommittee. It used to be net zero, but we've, mer we've merged those. So the materials people have been seeing in the subcommittee have all been put up. So if you're not in the site committee or you're not in the building committee, you can look at what people have been seeing and discussing in those. So I, I know, Tim, you're going to be talking about some of that, but Denisco has given us that and we have... I think as of yesterday, we've populated all the subcommittees with those materials. It's on to you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, I am going to share and I'm going to give the headlines from the meetings. Obviously, if we want to get into any of the details, we can go through the whole presentation, but I'm just going to give the big picture takeaways and uh, hopefully respond to any questions that come up. But starting with Uh, the site meeting that we had on May 10th, um, we had a good discussion about the impacts of the value engineering decisions that were made at the end of SD and what effect they would have on the design that we've been looking at through most of the process. Uh, so this is the layout that um, we were shared and presented and, and developed during the schematic design phase. Um, and then we accepted a few value engineering items that reduced hardscape and a few other things. And we just wanted to talk about those impacts and what that would mean in terms of the site and some of the other um, input that we received at the very end of SD and how that would affect things. Um, so here you can see a few changes. The basketball courts are pushed together. The overall hardscape and the uh, playscape is reduced by a target of 15%. Um, there was some good discussion at this meeting about maintaining the important aspects of the project, including uh, the trail that connects to the trail at the northeast of the site, um, making sure there was also a, a, a fairly robust discussion about how the playground should function and operate. And we have a follow-up meeting or we are attempting to schedule a follow-up meeting with the school staff and administrators to make sure that we are designing to all the right primary parameters for the operations of the school. Um, you will notice that the one of the rain gardens was reduced in this version of the site plan still presents an opportunity for outdoor learning, still does all of the functional things that it needs to do uh, to store and move stormwater on site uh, and all of the other program elements uh, remain, including the outdoor classroom. Um, and the in this version that was shown on May 10th, the drop-off loops both for the north and south for buses and parents remain the same. And then there was uh, some fairly good input from the committee, uh, from members of the community that they would like to see the plaza and drop-off area in front of the building uh, perhaps be a bit more bike and pedestrian focused rather than vehicle focused. Um, and so then as we moved into the meeting about site on May 17th, we have started to adjust the parking lot and the parent drop off loop a little bit to the north. We have shifted the area where the vans will park on the drop off loop to the south. Um, this gives us the opportunity to really broaden the plaza in front of the building to make it more pedestrian and human focused. It gives the flexibility for bus drop off to be essentially right at the front door. So in the morning, um, all of the students could come through the front door and have the same experience. Um, but it also leaves the flexibility to use the southern entrance of the center of the building. Maybe they'll alternate between a drop off and pickup. Uh, but based on the sort of input of the subcommittee and the members of the public who are there, we, we think we're really pushing the site in the right direction and incorporating all that we need to from the SD and the value engineering comments. I can get further deeper into it and go through all the slides, but that is the takeaway of the two meetings. If there are any questions on the site and we are 
in the process of scheduling a meeting with school administration to go all over these aspects, just to review them, to make sure that the voice of the administrators and the people who you know are in charge of operations day to day are, are absolutely um, on board with everything that we're doing. Kathy? Yeah, I have a, I just have a couple overarching, quite arching questions as you're shifting and I'll, the same question would be about the building um, and then sustainability. As things sh shift or get refined, can you alert us when something has a cost impact, whether it's a positive or negative cost impact um, as we're, we're looking at, um, and I know this is still, we don't even have playground equipment on the playgrounds yet. We have just the spacing of them. And I know there's been a question raised way back when about the um, what I'll call the green re rectangle between the play two playground areas, and we have a price tag on that. So I just, as we're going through this, not just now, but over the next several weeks, um, you know, keeping a what we already know before we go for the formal re-estimate of all of this, it would be good to get some sense of that. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, that's always in our mind. And I should reiterate that um, between PDP and PSR, there was a significant increase in cost due to the world at large and things like that. Now that we've passed SD and there is a project that. funding project, am I muted? Now that we have a project funding agreement in place, that is the budget. We um, are always making sure that we get back to that and anything that has a, a cost impact we'll have to make sure that it can be accounted for in the design contingency which is there for that or make some other changes to account for it so just want to reiterate that that is always in our design process uh, if there are no other questions on the site uh a brief recap of what we talked about inside the building. At the meeting on May 10th, we focused on the cafeteria area. We met uh, with the director of nutrition for the school, uh, reviewed the kitchen, how it would work in terms of Students coming to the cafeteria being dismissed to recess, uh, picking up their food, returning their trays. Um, there were no um, major changes. We will probably reconfigure the storage area. There is might not be enough room for collection of rubbish and potentially composting here. So these doors might move a little bit. Um, and then we have future meetings scheduled or in the process of being scheduled with the other components of the use of the cafeteria and the platform and the practice areas that are currently connecting to the cafeteria just to make sure that all of that is working harmoniously um, you know there was some discussion of perhaps changing this door a little bit so you can get directly into the practice space without going through the cafeteria but they are minor changes. So we will have follow-up meetings with uh, food service and our kitchen consultant, uh, but we discussed how that will work. The fact that it's an all electric kitchen, it's as, as efficient as possible um, and meeting all of the goals of the building. Um, and that meeting was a model for the major spaces. The next will be the library, but uh, we do have to have the meetings with the school staff and administrators first to make sure that uh, they are on board before we can bring it to the committee. Um, we only had one building committee to date, so uh, the update is brief, but that is what we talked about. And if there are no questions on that, I will move on to sustainability, which was probably the most robust discussion that we've had in the, in the past couple of weeks. Um, we had our team from Thornton Tomasetti um, for a lively discussion about a lot of it focused on the upcoming changes to the code and what that will mean for the building. Um, and the two ways that the code evaluates energy 
um, use and conservation in the building. Uh, one measures TEDI, which is uh, thermal energy demand intensity. It's a basically a measure of the envelope and how much energy it takes to heat or cool the spaces. It's a, a little bit technical um, and uh, takes a lot of explaining to me and to everyone else. Um, uh, luckily, we had Thornton Thomas Eddie there who did a good job, I think. Um, and then also the, uh, the, the new code will also uh, basically take an aggregate of the U value of the envelope, uh, and we'll call the backstop calculation. So through those two measures, um, we have analyzed the building as it was um, published at SD. Um, we are fairly confident that we are going to meet the Teddy mark and then to meet the overall envelope um, performance, we may have to adjust uh, the glazing properties, go from a double paned window and curtain wall system to a triple paint or perhaps a double paint with a uh, mylar film in the middle, uh, which we did uh, provide a pricing alternate for at SD and perhaps added a little bit of insulation. Uh, the state will be publishing the final technical guidelines for how these calculations are done within weeks. And at that point, we will know um, with very high confidence what we have to do for the envelope. Um, but it it is possible and, and maybe likely that we will have to few, make a few changes. And, and that gets back to Kathy's point of when we are adding or adjusting things, we have to make sure that it all balances in the budget. Uh, but we are on track for our net zero goals. We are on track for an EUI of 25. The changes that we make to meet the Teddy and code performance will probably push the EUI down, which is good because having a cushion it always helps. Uh, but so, and then we will schedule the next sustainability meeting um, when we have those results from Thornton Tomasetti to make sure that uh, we are confirming everything that we discussed last Wednesday. Those are the headlines and the recap. Any detail or questions we can get into? Sean. Tim, this is, um, I don't need an answer now, but I'm just curious, um, what do you think will be the timeline for procuring the solar panels? And is, um, I know ultimately it's a town decision, but is there a recommended sort of pathway for procuring those panels or can the town do what it wants to procure the panels? Or uh, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Um, Rick, do you wanna jump in on that? The, the question is, and, and we have time to discuss this, is if it's going to be part of the uh, general bid, which has happened before and, and, and can, be a, uh, can be done, or if it's a separate contract uh, to the town, which would likely which would have to happen uh in coordination with the construction construction work uh, are there ways we could get pricing on both uh, reason i ask is i've been looking into some different consortiums and there's um there's various consortiums that have do competitive solar panel um purchasing programs uh ones that we can own um and so i'm just yeah curious curious how I know we're probably maybe a year before we have to start thinking about that or maybe not, I don't know. But yeah, think about timing when we should start zeroing in on that. And then I assume if it goes to the GC, there's gonna be a GC markup on it, um, a GC, but, but maybe a it's worth it for the coordination. I, don't, I guess that's the Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. We, there, are, there are two things um, at play here. To install the panels on the roof, the... Uh, if it's uh, if basically the roof's got to be completed and under warranty before the panels go on and and not <clears throat> and, and inspected by the manufacturer, there are uh, anchor systems that are recognized by uh, I know Sarnafil has a system where it can be integrated or and even come in after the fact under a known system, uh, but. 
but the basic roof work has to be done. So there's there's a coordination thing there. You want to get all the trade. There are a lot of trades on a roof before the project is done. Mm -hmm. And so the solar people are really the ones that are up there last and, and closing the door behind them. Okay. The uh, canopies. Uh, yeah, we've had projects where the canopies have gone in after the fact and very, very complicated, uh, sensitive porous pavement parking lots where we're not having, but it's possible to have somebody come in and do that after the fact. Uh, after the the general contractor puts all the empty conduits in and everything, but from a coordination standpoint, uh, either wait wait till the end or have the general contractor court be responsible for coordinating it all, and you not. And we'll be talking about that sooner rather than later because it'll show up. We'll have to figure out where to put it. In the cost estimates, so the it, it's not rate. a filed it's not a filed sub bidding category, right? For, uh, or, or will it be? It that's that's interesting. Uh, it, can be, it can be it can be added to the electrical. I yeah. guess my main thing is I just if we do go through the GC, I want to make sure it's um, you know a competitive procurement because that's what we would do if we were doing it ourselves right. at least. Um, Okay, so maybe this is just to start the conversation and something the sustainability right. working group can add to its list when you think it's appropriate. Okay. Thank you. So <clears throat> I see um, that uh, Jonathan's hand is down. Kathy, you had a comment or question and then I have a comment. Kathy, go ahead. Thanks, although Jonathan's hand was up, it went back down. Yeah. <laughs> and mostly Rick hit the, hit the things I, I was gonna say. Around the the, the file sub bit and the and the the you know having the solar under the since it's roof a lot of it will be roof mounted under the um, coordination of the GC. So to me, it sounds like it would be you know advantageous uh, unless there's a real cost impact uh, an advantage to the town another way. Yeah, I also just want to add that the parking lot coordination may be just as complicated because right. the staging area for the demolition of the building happens where so yeah i think we're saying the same thing so so my question goes with this set of if it were sounds like it needs to be coordinated and integrated um if we can get a separate cost on the actual purchase of them the way the federal credits work these new credits um, and this is not i i computed it two different ways and it's not a huge difference if you pay outright for them rather than fold them into a municipal bond and debt, um, you get a bigger credit. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a, so if it's an up to 30% credit and you get a 15% less of the credit. So it turns out to be like a 25% credit um, if you uh, finance it with a municipal bond. So just, it, and I, as I said that once you're, in long-term bonds, it's not it's not a huge difference in the net um, in terms of it, but it's being identified being able to identify the actual what was the cost of the canopies and the roof installation as a separate item is something we will have to have so we can, as a town, apply for that credit. So as long as it's a clear line item. So I'll stop there. So I see Paul has his hand up. Just to note that Simone and Alicia are here. Okay, great. So um, let me just, um, if Simone and Alicia, if I call out your name, can you let me know whether you can hear and we can hear you? Simone? Yes. And Alicia? Yes. Thank you. Thanks for joining. This is Allison. I'm also here. Allison, hi. Wonderful. Excellent. Thanks okay. for joining. <laughs> So the thing I wanted to add, um, going back to uh, Sean, to your question about timing. So um, I would say that the sorting through the pros and cons of how a couple of these items, the solar panels, as well as the geothermal system, how they get procured, you know, should ideally happen in design development. 
Um, there's, you know, there's pros and cons, sort of like the geothermal has some of the same issues as the solar, like should it be part of the site work, should it be part of the mechanical contractor's work. Um, there's pros and cons, I won't get into them here, but um, it, it does make a difference um, to the way the specification is written and the way the drawings are put together. So by the time um, the Danisco's team is starting construction documents, I think it would be fair to say, Tim and Rick, that you would like to see those decisions made, right? And that is going to be in the fall. Ideally, yes. Yes. Okay. So that gives you a sense of the time frame, Sean. Thank you. Okay. So anything else on the meetings? Kathy, do we want to give an update on the site meetings? Yeah, I just want to two things. Um, the, the schedule that was sent to everyone for next week, um, there was a site design meeting um, set up for in, at nine in the morning. We're moving that to the following week, uh, to the 31st. And what we are doing in the afternoon, and anyone who wants to come to this can, um, we've agreed to meet with the leadership of the athletic groups that use the community fields. So a focus just on the fields. And so that will be at six o'clock on the 24th. So it's the leadership of the softball uh, pickle, uh, pickleball. Uh, had a pickleball conversation earlier today, but we don't have a pickleball court on these fields, but fris Frisbee and soccer. Um, and and then the group that also secured the, applied for, and there's CPA money for the fields. So that'll be a 90 minute with Danisco showing the general layout and then getting, it's a listening session. So we, it's been asked for and Danisco agreed to do it. So, um, so people who, it's not a meeting of the site subcommittee, but anyone who wants to can go to that. Um, and it will be just, we'll just be listening um, and taking notes. Um, so I will attend that. So that's the major change from next week. So they're the only subcommittee meeting next week, Tim and, and Rick, I think is building um, if I'm looking at the 24th. Uh, that is correct. And then, um, as I said a couple of times, um, we're scheduling some meetings with the school staff that we have to have before we can get back into the building. I just want to thank Allison and Tammy for uh, making that happen. or working yes, on making that Allison, happen. And as, as, as Margaret said at the beginning, with Mike not here for now, Allison and Tammy have, ag have agreed and step to step in and help coordinate the meeting with key staff on as we go through these various issues um, on the the details of design. Um, so and to find times during the teachers busy days and the staff's busy days that they can meet um, since we we can't set up evening meetings with them. So I think that's the that's the update on site. So next week is just building, but there is this community field meeting at six o'clock in the evening on the 24th and then building design. And then the following week, there is a site subcommittee and a building design subcommittee meeting. And those are uh, still set up for nine to 11 in the morning for site and 12 to two, but but I think we, if people who, um, particularly um, school staff, Ben, Rupert, Allison, Tammy, um, if somehow those don't work for you, we can look, we can potentially look for other times because we want to make sure we get uh, key staff in there from the schools as well as from the committee. And there, the the subcommittee. Then the other comment I was going to make is to the extent there is broader interest um, among the 13 of us that in, in either of these subcommittees, if you let me know, we can call it a, a meeting of the committee of the whole, 
you know, if we get up, to, we can get up to seven as long as we've posted it. It's not just a subcommittee meeting, but it's a whole committee. So there's a, has been a lot of interest in this, particularly on the site. Um, so rather than saying, you know, Ben and Rupert can't both be there or Tammy and Allison can't be there at the same time, um, we, we, these were not set up to try to be restrictive. So just people should let us know, let me know, and then I will post it um, to allow as many as seven or more of us be there. Otherwise, we can't, we won't be able to have that happen. Paul, did, I said that correctly, right? Um, with it. So that, I think those are the major changes from the schedule that we posted before. And so the building committee subcommittee is next week. Um, it is still, it's still scheduled at the same time from 12 to two. So Kathy, can I just, just for my notes, a couple of clarifications. So right now, I think everybody has an invite from Angela on the 24th at 9 a.m. You should delete that invite. Okay, so that meeting is moved to the 31st. Um, and then the other thing is, Kathy, you said there is also a building committee meeting on the 31st at noon. Well, and my schedule had um, my schedule had May 31st had site at 9 to 11 and building from 12 to 2 on. So, on, so on the I'm just confirming because Angela hasn't sent out an invite for that one. So I just want to confirm that if that's correct. We should ask her to send one out. She hasn't, she hasn't even set them up yet, Margaret, to my knowledge. You know, we, we, we did, okay. we, did, we didn't set up all three weeks worth, but, but, okay. but all the rest, all the rest of them are in here, but that one is not. So, okay. Um, so, I, and I, then I, the next full committee meeting of this group is June 16th. That's correct. I'm just double checking dates to make sure yep. that's. Yeah, June 16th. Okay. So that's, you know, and, and I see Rupert has his hand up. I am not sure that Angela sent out uh, subcommittee invites for each of them. I think she posted them, but we'll make sure that happens. So people both put it on their calendar, but they have an invite. So I see Rupert has she, his hand up. Yeah, she has sent out, except for that last one, she has sent out invites for all of them. Rupert. Uh, looks like I have in my calendar two site subcommittee meeting invites on the twenty fourth. You do, Rupert, because okay. we're gonna we're gonna that's have the staff one. One of them is the staff, staff one, and one is exactly. Yeah. So, so what you want to do is for the twenty fourth, if you need to clean up your calendar, delete the one that says ESBC site subcommittee. That's the one that you, was that you. was going to be the public meeting. That's not happening. Okay. So, and, and as you know, I set these up, you gave me the power to do it by saying, go ahead and just assign us. And what I tried to do is distribute it among people, but many people, um, Phoebe's not here right now, but Phoebe said, Phoebe said, I'd love to be on both building and site. And Rupert and Ben said, they alternately would want to be on, sometimes be on both um, building and site, but sometimes only one. So there's not any easy way for me to do that on subcommittees, but but just let me know um, and we can, we can be flexible to make sure people who need to or want to come to a specific discussion. And those discussions are still listed on a, what the plan is to what, what will be focused on in each of those meetings. Are there any questions about all of this? Um, I'm slowly but surely getting over my jet lag. So I am wide awake and, and I can take notes too. <laughs> you, you mean you're, you're wide awake at the correct times? That's, that's, well, it's not quite correct, but it's not as bad as it was the first couple of days. Um, so I'm not seeing any other um, comments or hands raised. And Allison, just thank you so much for being willing to help out on this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, 
definitely appreciated as well as needed. So I think the other issue before opening it to public comments is the uh, invoice, Correct, Margaret? Yeah, so there's just one invoice. And as I said at the beginning, we're, we're coming to the end of um, all the billing for this phase. Um, this is the last invoice you're gonna see for feasibilities, our invoice. It's for a small amount of money, so it's easier to scroll through than others. So um, if everybody can see it, you can see here the total. This is for the period ending April 30th. You know, as you know, the vote was May 2nd. So essentially moving into the next phase, our, the total for our invoice for this period was 3,910. I do wanna bring to everybody's attention so we were able to complete the work for less than our original contract, unlike Danisco's contract, which is a so-called lump sum contract, ours is a not to exceed. So there is a little less than $25,000 that's sort of going back into Sean's pot. Um, it was part of the appropriation for this phase. So let me just scroll through. Um, the good and to news. clarify, not Sean's pot, but the, the town's pot. So <laughs> Sean, Sean doesn't have Sean's a pot. pot as it relates to the town's finances. Yes, How about that? <laughs> Sean's slush fund. <laughs> um, so it's it's basically you'll see, um, and I, I believe I've introduced Ksenia at previous meetings. So Ksenia is transitioning into this phase. Um, we also had reporting for the end of the phase to complete and you know odds and ends there was work on the website which you know is going to continue to be um have a role in sort of rolling stuff out for um the community share to sharing community information Ksenia is going to be uh, helping with that as well as general leadership on the project so so that is it for the one invoice building quickly off what um margaret said so this is the final invoice for answer we've paid all the invoices for Danisco for their base fee. And the only thing left for feasibility is some reimbursables um, that we're working with um, Danisco just to, to close out uh, services provided during feas um, feasibility. And then we'll be, we'll be done with that phase of the project. So I will make a motion to approve the invoice as presented. Second. Paul seconded, and I will do a roll call vote. Uh, Rupert. Actually, Rupert had your, did you have a hand up, your hand well, up before I, I go to vote? I was just gonna ask, um, cause I know there was, uh, MSBA said the town is entirely on its own for a certain part of the development because it's our second try at this project. Have we gone past that zone and now we're into yeah. the park? So this, um... This phase that we're about to complete is the end of that and starting anything after May 2nd, really, that comes in, we'll start getting reimbursed for. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, Rupert, I moved too fast to any other questions on this. So then I'll do a roll call vote. Jonathan. Yes. Ben. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rupert. I guess I should think about this before I say yes. <laughs> Paul. Yes. Sean. Yes. Allison. Yes. Angelica. Yes. Alicia. Yes. Simone. Yes. And Kathy is a yes. So it's unanimous with two absent. I think the two absent. Tammy and Phoebe. So thank you all. So in the in this complicated, quickly, what schedules change? We'll as once this meeting is over, I'll just confirm with Denisco and send out a clean um, for May twenty fourth and for May thirty first, and then we'll put holds on people's calendars depending on whether you're in these subcommittees or not. So just try to um, keep the complexity as simple as possible. <laughs> so any other questions or comments? Um, then I am going to open it to public comment. We are open now for public comment. Okay, uh, I see one. Okay, 
Bruce, I have allowed you to talk. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Well, I guess I should begin by thanking Sean for his providing me with my morning giggle about how he doesn't really have a part. So I guess that means he's limiting limiting his beer intake as well. Um, <laughs> however, um, a couple of uh, questions. Uh, first, on the uh, building committee, uh, on on the sustainability committee, and the question of uh, triple glazing. Um, Tim, I I, want, I I appreciate you not going to answer this now, but. Uh, uh, it, it occurred to me that uh, is there the option of having not all triple glazing, but some triple glazing? Because as we look around the building, there are certain windows. Windows do different things. There are some larger windows in places like the cafeteria where people are sitting close to the window glazing. And there are some large windows or windows where people aren't, like in the gym and in the stairwell. And there are small windows and big windows and triple glazing in small windows per square foot of glazing is more expensive than triple glazing in large windows. So it seems to me that there might be a cost saving involved and also one that gets us to Teddy um, that would involve uh, um, selectively um, making some windows triple glazing and some others. I mean, I can see that there might be all sorts of reasons why that doesn't make sense, but I I want to. I would ask that uh, we we think at least of that uh, before we go all or none. Um, second question related to the building design. Uh, I did attend a, 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 a three months ago now, just as we were in the midst of the uh, cost estimating, a daylighting seminar for schools that was provided by Margot Jones and Leisha Hershong, who's really. Um, very uh, skilled and, and, and internationally famous when it comes to daylighting in schools in particular. And a fellow from LAM Partners, uh, it was a very interesting uh, um, coverage of the, essentially of the Gardner School, which is a school quite close to us, which is just recently opened. And I don't want to get into the daylighting part because I promised I wouldn't do that anymore after the last uh, sub uh, sustainability meeting. But one thing that was very interesting in that was that the, um, that school, they made a very conscious decision to lower the uh, uh, sill heights, the window sill heights in the kindergarten, even below the, the other small kid classrooms to give the kids, uh, uh, the, the toddlers really, uh, a direct view out. Um, they had some good reasons and some very positive feedback from having done that. So I would ask that we also consider uh, understanding the window height uh, that, that, that that school and that project used and seeing whether we might not uh, derive a similar benefit for the very, very young kids. Um, I think that's it for me from now. Thank you. And, and congratulations, everybody, for uh, being back and uh, in this next big phase of this project. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Uh, Maria. Hi there, thank you. Um, heartfelt thanks to Denisco and Kathy for setting up the meeting for next week. We really genuinely appreciate the opportunity to speak with you um, about the fields. Um, couple of quick, um, small things. Uh, I, I note that the basketball courts are now um, adjacent to each other, but with that very acute angle between them. I'm wondering if you could consider keeping them adjacent, but making that making them parallel, um, I think partly for safety in that corner, um, and also having, um, being able to have just benches kind of go the entire length, you know, or uh, kids uh, or, or adults standing the entire length. It's, it, uh, I think that might be a better solution than that very acute angle in there. Um, <clears throat> if it is at all possible, could, um, and you might have already have this developed, but it's it would be really helpful to have an, be able to overlay the current site with the building and the paving with your proposed, just because when um, it, it's really helpful to walk the site and to get a sense of proportion and, and that kind of thing, to be able to overlay those two things um, uh, and see what how will this look different in real life and also some dimensions and the wetland de delineations, that would be extraordinarily helpful if you could do that. Um, and 
appreciate all the work that's being done on sustainability. Um, and yes, it looks like there's going to be some additional costs there, but I think spending our money um, on sustainability, accessibility, and safety, I think is all money well spent in the long term. So um, I appreciate the work of the, the net zero slash sustainability committee um, to, to make this building as good as it can be for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. So I think that is it uh, for public comments. Um, Kath, Kathy, can I ask Margaret a question real quick? Sure. Um, Margaret, I, I think we did have one more invoice from Danisco, but you may not have had time to review it and look at Tim if he can confirm. But I do have another invoice that's just um, reimbursables for April uh, did, through April 30th. Did that come yesterday? Um, I thought it came a little while ago, but. Um, once you pull it up, um, I went back and looked for invoices and the last one I had was from, from Denisco was from February, okay. but I could have missed one. Yeah, I will share it. And then Tim, I don't know if you, if you know, if this invoice, um, completes the billing for Denisco for feasibility, or if there may be additional, um, but again, this is the invoice. There's no base fees that's been fully billed. Um, uh, so this, this yeah, for some reason, geothermal. I got, yeah. Um, I, so I will say I, I checked in with Donna yesterday and she said there is going to be a little bit more billing okay. on this. Um, but I would definitely, I believe that is correct. There's one more reimbursable. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this bills the majority of what hadn't been billed, which was the geothermal. Um, I'll keep okay. Going. That see. makes sense because there was there was a lot that was still remaining on that line item. So, right. so this is the, the invoice specifically for the wetlands. Got it. And this is the invoice from the vendor itself. That's all the concom stuff. Yeah. For the meeting. And then this is the invoice for the geothermal component. And the invoice itself. Um, so unless anybody has any objections, I'd move that we approve this invoice as well. Uh, Shane seconds. So I need to go through and take a vote and Sean will make sure that we don't pay it twice if we. <laughs> no, this is, this is, um, I, I have folders for when new invoices come in, we have it approved this one. Right, okay. We, have, we definitely have Yeah, I, I definitely don't have that one, so I- Our, our system won't let us pay the same invoice twice. It's, That's great. Yeah, so. So, Jonathan. The good system. Yes. <laughs> Paul. Yes. John. Yes. And. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Allison. Yes. Alicia. Yes. Simone. Yes. And Kathy is a yes. Um, so we are, it's the same total yeses with two uh, not present, Margaret, for yeah. that. Thank you all. And thank, thank everyone. I thank everyone for the active participation on these subcommittees. Um, and what I, this is kind of a pun, but the attention to detail, which is where we are right now. <laughs> and so we're, we'll be meeting together as a full group um, on June 16th, and then we will send out the revised on the site, site and building subcommittees. We don't have a sustainability one scheduled again. We will schedule it most likely in July based on when the state's new regs will come out. And so we'll we'll send I'll send those out again. And if people, as I said, if people want to come to one of these subcommittees where they are not on it, just let me know, and I can post it uh, differently. I can change the way we post it so we can we won't have the cap of seven people can't show up. Um, I think but, that's yeah. It. Kathy, can I just add? I mean, I I hope this feels you know we're sort of trialing this out, you know, 
um, having the subcommittee and then bringing the summary to the committee, but this feels like it's been pretty productive in terms of use of people's time. Do, do people generally feel that way? Yes, Jonathan's giving us a yes. Okay. No, I think so. And, and you know, when I came back, I was able to watch the tape and then look at the minutes. So I didn't feel like I had missed the discussion, but it saved me time on having not to have to be be there. So mm -hmm. so all of these, these these meetings are all being recorded if someone wants to go back and see what the discussion is as well. So I think with uh, that comment, um, and please do email me. I, I, do, I respond or text me if you have questions or any concerns about any of this as we try to move through this phase. Um, seeing no hands up, I think we are adjourned at 920. Have a good weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend.